Hello, beta testers. The only thing more sad than modern gaming are the people defending it. You won't need a grain of salt for what I'm going to tell you, but if all of these things don't come to pass, with where the bar will have to be, you may need a shovel to dig down to it. Without ado, number 10, costumes and character representation. This is where I can say I'm overjoyed at the dumpster fire that was Crystal Dynamics Marvel's Avengers. It was so poorly received. The push of the insufferable Kamala Khan, ugly designs, a lack of focus, have made the perfect, hilarious guide on how not to make a superhero game. People were exceptionally vocal about the lackluster knockoff versions of their heroes not being appealing, and the adorable narrative that it's because they don't look like their MCU counterparts was swiftly kicked right out the door. Marvel Ultimate Alliance 3 had delicious designs and beautiful models, and everyone appreciated that. It's almost a little embarrassing, isn't it? That Insomniac Games and Spider-Man understand the assignment so well that they demonstrate how to please fans with identical skins available with the price of purchase, but boneheaded dynamics actually expected to get away with t-shirt and jeans, almost kinda sort of inspired trash for $15 on top of the $60 price of admission? The biggest comedy being that the vast majority of Marvel fans, myself included, would gladly have paid prices if there were identical skins to the comics, there were actually things to do in those games, and if the models were actually fit, sexy, athletic, instead of the schlubby, frumpy models farted out by yet another woke team. Let Asians design these models more than a year before its launch, fans were clear, enough to trigger a response from Bill Roseman, who told everybody that they were hearing and listening to feedback, sure. It may have gotten them to tone down that far quad chin, but Jay Leno Black Widow still wasn't safe from the Qatar dress code that she needed to be. As hard as you push some of these modern, bizarrely ugly designs and unpopular characters, players, unfortunately, still want what they know and love. And if you're too stupid and stubborn to make that money, then move aside and let passionate people do it because they'd do a better job in their sleep than you could with a delayed game. Oh, I gotta be zany. I'm your manic pixie. Like, like she doesn't need to be the manic pixie anymore. The firm disgust for this anti-attractive nonsense is only present in Western games and specifically seems to be targeting women. But if there were any normal married women on deck as developers, any gay people, bi people, trans people, drag queens, I'm pretty sure that the consultation they'd provide would be to tell you that they not only love jiggly melons and cakes, but that if they were to make their own characters, they might choose those assets to have some real fun and roleplay as well. That's what games are entertainment, escapism. But ignore me if you want to repeat the Saints Row reboot. The big money will be right here when you're willing to apply this knowledge into wisdom. These characters are not and have never been broken. They are celebrated around the world and do not need censoring. Don't jump on camera with a prop comic book and point around your room. Talk is cheap. If you have any respect and appreciation for these layered, flawed, but extremely appealing characters, you won't alienate the fans by offering anything less than the styles and iterations that they've come to pay upwards of thousands of dollars for. Fans don't just pay hundreds for figures and props, they pay hundreds for cosplay. Talented people who can sculpt weapons and artists who can draw pictures. Digital artists that can create these 3D videos and mod games to put models into a virtual sandbox and people are making that big money by catering to these fans and if you cannot with big studio money behind you you deserve the failure for god's sake why must the fans beg fell out the ugly tree and hit every branch on the way down harley is fine but variety is the spice of life your fans will pay 
for normalcy. If American developers have no problem with shirtless men but are so triggered that they have to edit the camera away from a clothed woman's ass, they're insecure, sad hypocrites who have no place preaching to anyone about diversity or equality. Learn what the word means. This live service is not releasing in a vacuum, and I do not anticipate that it will be free. It needs to compare to Genshin Impact, to Fortnite, to many existing services because you're vying for players' time. You may have a fandom in your hand, but players know now more than ever to be cautious. When you add heroes and anti-heroes, they can't just be playable content. They need to be characters. This extends to locations as well. I don't doubt Rocksteady understands this, but in realizing characters like the confident and cruel Poison Ivy, the complicated and feisty Catwoman, the animations, the voices, the motivations, the playstyle, these need to be perfectly executed. And if the studio isn't out of touch, it should be easy. You should surely understand how lucrative characters like Catwoman and Cheetah would be within certain communities these days. Don't be inferior, especially at a glance. I expect you'll script flirtation between Ivy and Harley, so it'd be lovely if they weren't both butch. If you do them justice, fans will be happy. Don't be worse than Gotham Knights. Don't be worse than Injustice. Don't be worse than Arkham. For the love of God, don't be worse. When you are digitally creating these characters from scratch, there's absolutely no reason not to make them beautiful. Pull a Hideo Kojima. Give us something to look at. Act like you've seen an Instagram, a TikTok, a Twitch stream before. Stop toning down these characters. If we wanted Saints Row Reboot, we would buy that dog water. Remember that strong men, strong women, gymnasts, athletes, inspired the remarkable art that made comics fly off the shelves and help build a legacy that will last longer than any of us. Stop breaking what doesn't need fixing. Because trust me, when your game launches, there will be plenty to fix. Which of course leads me neatly into number nine, stability and performance. One of the reasons Western studios deliberately uglying up only their women characters is so funny to me is because they've been kicking unfinished garbage out the door for damn near two decades. Assassin's Creed Unity, Fallout 76, Mass Effect Andromeda Anthem, Cyberpunk 2077, Call of Duty Vanguard, Battlefield 2042, Outriders, Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition, Marvel's Avengers, Gotham Knights, you insert a game I didn't even have the time to pay attention to here. Sometimes a lack of content and an absence of promised features dooms a project, but other times, an absolutely incorrect and unappealing approach sabotages a work before it can jump off the drawing board. Halo Infinite launched so content bare so lacking in what the previous incarnations possessed that retaining players was impossible. As a live service, it simply did not compare. Destiny had Bungie to remember gameplay mattered above all else. The sunk cost of the cucks chain to that game is not just money, it's also time. No Man's Sky had a developer capable of shame, enough to own up to the ocean of lies that it told while marketing its lie of a game. Cyberpunk was sexy, content full, and had an above average anime to dupe people back into giving the experience another try, well after launch when its laundry list of bugs had finally been fixed. So, with the frequency of these unfinished games launching with the promise that they'll eventually maybe get better soon, these studios clearly possess no capacity for shame, and community managers for terrible games calling players terrorists because they didn't eat up that unfinished garbage, it really goes to show you how little interest some of these people have in earning the players that they seek to nickel and dime. Fortnite will put in that work, so will Apex, so will Genshin. Saints Row Reboot is a delicious case, honestly, as it 
It's the video game equivalent of Fast and the Furious without the cars. Delayed six months, still trash. Many thought the bar couldn't be buried deeper before Gotham Knights sold the show with its lack of stable 30 FPS. God damn, you know what I mean? <laughs> The lack of stability and dated, clunky combat in an action superhero game just got me laughing. An execution worse than Fortnite could manage, which honestly leads me to my next point. Number 8. Traversal. This stuff really does need to be said, man. When Fortnite out here consistently flexing Unreal Engine, they got the Spider-Man swinging working real well in lobbies with a hundred motherfuckers connected. I, you know, what do I say? What do I say? The audacity of having such clunky traversal in both these superhero games when Fortnite farted out a piece of equipment that allowed for momentum, you know? Responsive freedom of movement, sliding, super sprinting, uh, long jumping, web swinging, tethered, s s sliding behind things, you know? Riding around on motorcycles. What's, what's really going on, man? These games aren't as dated as, as they want you to believe they are. Fortnite allows players to ride zip lines and launch themselves out of cannons and dive from great heights, grapple hook, 100 players in the lobby. These experiences that are charging $0 for players to, um, you know, get into. Think about these things. You're, you're selling this game. You're going to be selling these skins. They're going to be ugly skins. And you're going to be, you know what I mean? I'm just, I'm just hypothetically, hypothetically. I'm sure you'll come correct and not be worse than the older iterations. Because imagine that on top of like bugs that you guys can't iron out as fast as we can find them. I'm sure you'll QA test, but will you QA test the way that bastards like us will play? Let's just move on. Number seven, boss, villain, henchman, or enemy variety. With all the time developers love to waste on camera hyping up their unfinished games, I'll be encouraging people to hold them to their word if it doesn't seem like the end game received a similar amount of enthusiasm. Awareness of the gaming landscape does not hurt in pleasing consumers, and lately it seems like these motherfuckers don't even play video games. Number 6. Character Synergy and Patrol in Genshin Impact, some of the ultimates are so flashy that I'm always wishing that MiHoYo would make a Marvel game. Jiggle physics, insane exploration, astounding quality, and Eastern Studio unafraid of including pretty women. If MiHoYo had the DC or Marvel property to sell one-to-one -one accurate skins with, they'd make all the money in the world. The thousands of dollars that fans typically spend more money on than they have friends to show those figures off to. But they don't typically force what doesn't work. Marvel Midnight Suns recently had a comic book maker brought this real Build-A-Bear workshop to my digital fingertips. It's just Photoshop with you swapping out models and you can change their poses, but when you can change their outfits, and it's 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 a nerd experience, man. And that kind of stuff matters. I actually have no doubt that uh, Rocksteady's gonna figure out. You know, we want team takedowns that are as cool as like you know X Men team up abilities where Colossus is throwing Wolverine and shit like that. I don't. I'm not worried. When I say patrol moments, I kind of want uh you know uh, public events. The sky darkens in destiny and a ship drops out of orbit and oh my god, we have to extract the glimmer. Some bullshit, you know what I mean? All of this I expect is a given because it'd be really hard to fuck it up worse than uh, Avengers did. So can we like go back to traversal? I look at Fortnite, a free experience. Cars, trucks, boats, buses, tanks, uh, planes, helicopters, hoverboards, UFOs, mechs, hamster wheels, Pl with plunger attachments. I could swing from behind you as you're riding in your vehicle, man cannons, wind tunnels, literal balloons. Remember that? Uh, launch pads, nimbus clouds. The thing about traversal is it can be boring without feeling or looking it, but these niggas so lazy they don't even put in the effort to do anything more for it. And Fortnite offers better for free. It also offers a jumping off point, uh, some homework you could copy. You could even trace the shit, man. But nah, I guess that's too much work. Number five, tone. 
It takes a passionate team with raw talent to craft something as therapeutic and mesmerizing as simply swinging in Spider-Man. Do players expect or demand that out of every studio? No, but you can't have bugs ugly and cringe. People who remember to make their game drip with pleasing, entertaining, fun, beautiful features that'll captivate the minds of those who play, stimulate the imaginations of people just watching. Those people become fans and fans come back for more. Swinging so therapeutic that people are still booting it up to zone out and talk about it even to this day, that's traversal. Because some developers don't waste the mature rating regressing, reducing, and removing what previous incarnations had. They don't use it to preach or bore or burden with chores their players. They provide an experience that people are glad that they had, fleshed out with characters and situations that suit the story and build instead of tearing down. Yeah, they can seem excessive out of context, but they were crafted by passionate people, not people like the Saints Row developers who were telling fans that they're hating just to hate. You know, there'll be people who hate it, you know, just to hate it. Um, and, you know, every... I was... I don't know why I was reading the comments, but I was reading the comments, and... Uh, <laughs> you're hating it just to hate it? You don't know why you're reading the comments? This is before your dumbass game came out. Developer, you guys are, quote, not backing down, end quote, and your idiot community manager is actually calling players terrorists for giving Saints Row the score it deserves? Smugly speaking this way before the launch of one of the most embarrassingly poorly executed games of the decade, Saints Row is so terrible that it made Agents of Mayhem look good, and that game bankrupted the studio. Mature ratings for woke studios means opportunities for cringe from aspiring canceled CW show writers because they're spending their day on Twitter and are the definition of out-of-touch losers. I'm currently playing through Midnight Suns, and they have the character Blade speaking like a nigga at a job interview. Wanna get your train game on? If not, we can talk a minute. Everyone tells me I've got the gift of gab. How's your mental health? A good portion of this darkness hunting game is mental health and processing intense situations. Dude. Everyone tells me I've got the gift of gab. Blade just said that to me. How is your mental health? It's just wrong. But the writing is horrendous. And I know they're trying to hide behind the comic books are corny shield. But when you put Wolverine, Blade, and Ghost Rider on your box, there are expectations. You cast Steve Bloom. You cast Black Dynamite. But he's got the gift of gab. Shut the fuck up. You know what I mean? Worst writing I think I've ever seen. The writing let down many of the characters in a variety of ways. The writing is downright terrible. The writing in this is absolutely nauseating. Awful abbey where they all live. It's like some kind of YouTuber house. And honestly, that's the thing. I would bow to this if it worked for Zoomers, but it doesn't work for anybody. That's what we have to ask ourselves. Who is this for? Yeah, okay. That is something I do now. I do magic. Jacked up beast. I'll probably fly next. Boy, oh boy, did people make it abundantly clear how unimpressed they were by this out of touch, lackluster, pitch tone deaf writing in this just kicked out the door tech demo for Final Fantasy's new engine. But you know who really does like it? This vanilla white man from Digital Foundry, because he was so offended by Project Eve's protagonist. Because like they put the camera angles chosen, it just felt like this game seems like a, a game that came out in like 002 in terms of its, you know, like character design. Okay, pretty women are dated according to this it's guy. Like a bit old and, and not flattering, I don't think, for a modern audience. Wow, for a modern audience. In, in comparison to something like Forspoken, which has, you know, uh, I mean, yes, it has a much more realistic looking character designs. 
uh, it's not these hyper proportioned uh, something or another's. But White boy saw a nice ass and said, hyper proportioned something or another's. Not only has this gargler roasted himself, but inadvertently, whatever man or woman he chooses to be with, just a plank, you know what I mean? From Ed, Ed, and Eddie. Western gaming, you are witnessed. We cringe and preemptively piss on the graves that you've long laid in a course for at warp eight. <laughs> Warp 9, oh my god. If this tiny man and his hilarious preference is what your studio is catering to, expect to fail. <laughs> you roasted yourself. He said, can't that be flatter? Uh -huh. Number 4, loot. This is less than a paragraph. If you're doing loot and it doesn't change your appearance, the loot better be comparable to Diablo Path of Exile. It should rival any looter out there because people will be able to tell real fast if like the Avengers and like Gotham Knights, whoever's in charge of the loot has no idea how it should work. Boy, ice that cake with bad character models and you see how you've wasted your money. You know what I mean? At least Gotham Knights had some nice booty. You see what I'm saying? And it went very far in marketing that game. But what am I talking about, right? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, go back to that white guy. <laughs> hyper proportioned uh, something or another. Number three, lies. So imagine you've bought a ticket for an R-rated slasher, but you finished the movie and there was no blood and there was no titties. You know, what, what? What even, what was the point? Saints Row reduced breast sizes, removed jiggle physics, and took away feminine walk animations and emotes. Here's a tip. Don't do that. You see this game? Makes money. You see this character? Bigger than Pikachu right now. That's, that's, it's lucrative in the gaming space, apparently. My God. Her attacks, her abilities, even her idol animations are polished and grant this chick personality charm that brings her to life and makes her sought after i know models and actors who could show you things in motion capture that could blow your mind you know you'd look at them and think that they were born for this work but the sad truth is animators and designers often reduce diminish and dilute the flavor that these artists bring to the table and it is so heartbreaking because of the reason that they do it and it's because these studios are woke and woke always goes broke because instead of supplying demand maybe out here trying to convince people what they like eh. nah we get number two content cadence like it or not fortnite and genshin have the correct frequency for content drops what's actually funny is the cadence is typically decided by how many people at launch are playing the game. Normally that's peppered by word of mouth. If the game's buggy, ugly, dated, uh, developed by a woke team who's pretty openly hostile <laughs> towards their fans, why should people play that? Of course retention's gonna be an issue when you didn't consider it profitable as a venture to inject enough content into the product to keep players figuratively on the hamster wheel until you come with the next pile of slop. And normally I wouldn't expect anything to change considering how stubborn they are. They're just gonna keep doing the same thing and hoping that something, you know, like a destiny happens again. Oh yeah, just like a, like a roaring fire kind of erupts out of nowhere. But to any idiots working on a live service right now, count your lucky stars that Marvel has not given Insomniac the task of making a Marvel live service. Can you imagine how little of a chance you'd have in that scenario? But guess what? The clock is still ticking to fall 2023 when Spider-Man 2 comes out, baby. And I'm pretty sure Suicide Squad's gonna come out before that. So, that's a pretty big, that's a pretty big scoop. Pretty big scoop. I love to look at Fortnite skin sales. Marvel, DC, lucrative stuff. Only thing more lucrative than that, that animation. Who's got that? Oh, Genshin's got that, baby. They got some, some jiggle for you. You like that? 
Is that what you like? Huh? Is that what you like? You're not going to get any of that from the modern games over at Vanilla White Man fucking... Thank you for watching, man. Can't even edit this. It's just... <laughs> I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick. I just wanted to put this out there as something to look back at later and go, yep, couldn't get any of them, <laughs> you know? I'm sure it won't be so bad, right? What's the future holding? Can't wait. Love you. See you soon. Um. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. Uh. <laughs> I just, I keep laughing every time I think of them trying to sell an outfit sexy like this but for the stick figure like alien bodies they got in this game <laughs> if I saw that on the street I'd run <laughs> it makes me sad because if you were to see the fucking models of the original masquerade you'd be like what the fuck happened to these people I'm sorry yeah no like there were jiggle physics oh there no And what about my body now? Hmm? I need pants I can pull up higher! Higher, damn it! <laughs> that is <laughs> Those are sex. some high trousers. There is no sex to be had with me. Yo. That's what my pants say. And what do your pants that. say about you? Huh? Look, do I do you think I wanted to have sex? Look at what I'm wearing. <laughs> the inversion. The inversion of it. People are so focused on, on thinking about whether or not women wanted sex based on what they were wearing, but who wants the sex the least based on what they're wearing? Yup. Under if, if your titties ain't in them pants, then they're not high enough. <laughs> <laughs>